Okay, so I got Rusty Mashore on the phone. Uh, this is our first phone interview, y'all. So, uh, Mr. Rusty, back up and tell them about yourself again. We just did this, and we didn't have something going right, so it's growing <laughs> pains. So, d- play it on us one more time. Tell us what you just told us. Uh, we'll, tr- we'll try it again. Yeah, do uh, it one more time. Uh, just Rusty, I mean, I'm Rusty Mashore. I run Mud Creek Hog Dog trials here in ringland oklahoma and mm-hmm. and uh i was several years ago some guys you know they was on me pretty hard about putting in a bait pen up here and, and uh i was i was moving a lot of hogs anyway trapping and catching a lot of hogs and i kind of needed a spot where i could handle that that big amount of hogs and and i said well if i'm gonna do that i'm gonna go ahead and put a bait pen with it so i said you know if, if i build it y'all gotta come and, and it just kind of went went from there when, but, when you say you're trapping a, a good amount of hogs, like how many hogs are you talking? Like so a monthly amount and then maybe a yearly amount. Uh, I mean, I, I've that's, always uh, undershot. That yeah. I was going to say, I know you're, you're not going, you're not going to overdo it, but it's, it's a lot of hogs. Yeah. It, it's, it's almost unreal really. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, on an average month, if I'm trapping hard, you know, it's it's not nothing to catch. I mean, you know, sixty to one hundred and twenty a week times. Yeah, uh, you know, just just depending on. Yeah, now that, depending... that's per week. That's per week average. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you'd yeah. say probably slow weeks would be fifty. Good weeks would be one hundred and fifty. Yeah, I'd probably say a slow weeks around twenty. Just oh, okay. I got you. Just for a good good now, number. You, you also uh you also guide hunts and stuff as well, correct? I do. I work for uh, uh Tornado Valley Outfitters uh and Stewart Ranch and Outfitters. I do all the dog hunts for for Tornado and then we run thermal thermal also for Tornado and Stewart yeah. Ranch out there. Yep. Now on the uh how long have you been doing that stuff? I've been working for Tornado and Sturts both for, I've been working for Tornado about four years and then Sturts about three. I got you. But yep. you, you've been in this game for a long time. Uh, in, I started hog hunting. In some form or fashion, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I started hog hunting with dogs when I was nine years old. And I'm 37 now, so. That's, man, you're that's, old, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen, seen the game change, you know. Uh, I yes. mean, when I when I was hunting, I think there was when I started hunting. I mean, that I can remember, I think there was like four, maybe five hog hunters in the state of Oklahoma. Wow! And you know that hunted with dogs, but yeah. see, that's the kind yeah. of the way it was with me here. You know, there was guys that was hunting with dogs, but there weren't many. And then I, I've seen it change. And it, and a lot of it's for the better. We got a, you know, there's a lot more guys. You know, hey, we can go hunt together and we can hang out. And, and for the majority, everybody gets along pretty good. So you know, it's changed for the better in that part. But it's it hasn't been, uh, hasn't changed for the better in a lot of other ways. So has it changed? Has it changed for the better? How would you say on your end? Uh, about the same. I mean, right yeah. I mean, you get. I mean, it's it's kind of push and shove, you know. They're, yeah. You know, there for a while, it was it was everybody's uncle's cousin's brother, you know, had all dogs. But, yes. Or, or thought or thought they thought, did. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say they they thought they they thought they had some. So, right. Yeah, and I, you know, I was one of those guys. I was I was blessed to to get in with some really good people that that had dogs. So I kind of, you know, and I was already an adult then, so I knew what hog dogs were supposed to be doing with by the time I got my first one. So I, you know, right. I, had, I had a leg up and then those guys also gifted me a lot of dogs. And then when they got out of it, they, they kind of passed them on to me. So I, I just got lucky. I could, right. I couldn't imagine some of these guys, how they have to start from absolutely nothing and no, and they don't know much and they don't know anybody. And, and they're starting this whole thing. Like we're doing shit, man. That's a lot of years go into this. Oh yeah. To get yeah. Right, so, it is. I was lucky. I, I mean, I was lucky from a pretty young age to to hunt with behind some really really good dogs. Yeah. And I, 
that hog dog term is something I don't I don't use very. I mean, I I don't just throw it around. I mean, yeah. it it. I think out of all the years I've hunted, I'd had I've had probably five what I'd call a true hog dog. I think I've had three. What you know, I that I would say in that classification. Right. Yeah. And. Yeah. Well, probably four, and, and the last two were – one of them was an absolute cull from somebody else. And when we got the dog, I don't know what changed, but something changed. And I'm telling you, that was a hog dog. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, the, kind, the kind that I like. In it. And it wasn't a super rough run and catch dog like the, most of the stuff that we run. This mm-hmm. this dog was a bay dog. Uh was not a real loose dog or anything. Very seldom put herself in a position to get hurt, but you know, ultimately in the end, it happened, and uh, wouldn't have had it any other way. If she yeah. was going to go out, you know, I'd rather go out like that. But very, there's oh, yeah. very, there's been very few hog dogs I've been that I've actually walked behind on my yard. I've got a bunch right. of them that'll find a hog. Now I got, I've got right. a bunch yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. So what what was your what's what's your breed of choice? You Catahoulas? No, no. <laughs> I just, I know, I know what you like. I've always um, been a yellow dog fan. I, yes, I mean, I grew up with yellow dogs, and yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm one of them guys. I don't care if it's purple, if it's what I like to hunt. You know, I mean, I, I'll hunt him, but yep. I've kind of deterred away from the spots a lot. Yeah, but, but uh. No, I mean they're mainly a black mouth. Like what I run now is mainly a black mouth cross. So the dogs that's in my pen right now go back to the first dog I got when I was nine years old. Wow. Uh, what kind of cross? Uh, what kind of cross are you talking? Uh, you the want to say? No, oh, man, don't bother me. But uh, I mean, we I bred a little bit into them here and there. Yeah. You know, to help on some things that yeah. that I thought they needed, but. Uh, gotcha. Mainly still a black mouth Catahoula cross. So yeah, I but there's a little bit of like in my dogs now. There's a little bit of hound, a little bit of July, and I'm. Uh, I've I've seen where uh, that's coming into play, uh, and, and it, it's I I don't I don't want to say that it's just coming into play because it's not. Like you said, you've been no. you've had it since forever. Uh, there's other guys out there, you know, uh, Jake Locano, Pat Lewing. Uh, Logan Campbell, bunch of those guys like Ed Barnes, you know, they, they've always had some other stuff crossed into theirs. We always ran all different kinds of crosses, but it seems like with the black mouth curve that somebody has a line similar to yours that has a little bit of hound or a little bit of bulldog somewhere back in there or a little bit of catahoula. <laughs> it seems like those really shine, like those become – what you know? Those are the hog dogs. Those Man, are it, turns out to be the hog dogs. Like here, it's I mean, it's it's kind of weird, and I, I mean, and, and if they can do it in my county, they can do it anywhere in the country. Yes, sir. and uh, I mean, and I don't know what it is about this, you know, this little three county area, and I mean, there's there's guy there's coon hunting guys here, you know, that go and you know they run you know, trials everywhere across the United States and, and they'll tell you, you know, if they can do it on Mud Creek, they can do it anywhere. And I, and I I've, always, <laughs> I've always kind of believed that, you know, because we got a mix of different, I mean, like you can go from where I am and you can go west and you're more like in the west Texas and then you go east and you're more, you know, into kind of the, you know, the more creek, you know, the big creek bottoms and the you know, the pine, I mean, you get on further in there and you'll get into some pines and some, you know, different stuff. Then you get north of here and it's, it's post oak, you know, thick post oak mm-hmm. briars. You go south, you're getting in towards river flats, you know. Yeah, you see and, a lot of, a lot of terrain change uh, when we came out there, you know. Yeah. I, I went two different directions to come to your place. I went, you know, a different way this time than I did the first time. And the terrain was drastic. I mean, literally, like you said, you'll be in, you know, a really rough, more hilly terrain here. And then in 10 minutes, you're in just flat, open fields, 
with a bunch of dry washes and gullies and river bottoms. And, and then you'll be over here to where it's just thickets and real thick stuff. I, you know, I, I mm. could see where you, cause see, it's similar here. It's not as, I'm not going to say it's as drastic because we'll have like a lot of big hills in one section of the state, you know, and, and when I say that, I mean like a quarter of the state, you know, and then it'll be different in all four corners. Because, yeah, right. you know, we go for all the way from the Gulf to the mountains and everything right. in between. So you can get – there's a lot of guys that coon hunt here the same way. They like taking their dogs and starting them here where there's not a lot of coons and the terrain's mm-hmm. rough. And then they take them on those big hunts, you know, in, uh, say, uh, Michigan or, or Ohio, somewhere like that, and there's more agriculture. And, and right. they, they, they really – their dogs really perform. And I, I think a lot of it, you know, the dogs the same way. I mean, cause my, my dog, I mean, I, I may get a wild hair and I may cast them one night or I'm mm-hmm. good and I may rig them or, man, just hunt different, I guess. Yeah. And how many dogs do you got, you know, like, so how many dogs do you got in your pack that you're hunting? We'll be back after a quick break. We would like to interrupt this episode to take a moment to thank our sponsors and friends of Dixie Doggers Podcast, Southern Cross Cut Gear, Boars and Broads, Hardcore Hog Dogs and Cut Gear, Showtime Premium Pet Food, Animal Housing Solutions, Tusker's Magazine, American Doghorn Association, Four L Kennels, Hogbang.com, The Boar's Nest, Crockett Taxidermy, Mud Creek Hogbang. A big shout out to all those people and companies who help make us who we are. Thank y'all. Uh, the main pack. I'm. I'm. I don't really hunt a whole lot of dogs. A lot of times, I mean, I'll hunt two or three cur dogs and. I run one kick. That's it. I got you. I didn't. Because, like, I mean, you know, some people, they'll have, you know, like like us, a lot of times, we'll have four to six dogs. It just depends on where we're going. Right, yeah. Uh, And and depends on how we're hunting. Yeah. If if we're hunting rough dogs, I want want a bunch of them. Right, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I I know guys that that they, they pride themselves on having them one or two ranked cur dogs that can stop a Mack truck. Hey, and that's great. There ain't no doubt. But yeah. I, I got six of them. You know, I'm I'm gonna put I'm gonna put six of them down if if that's oh, yeah. what it calls for, you know. Uh, yeah, for sure. We got a picture off the game camera yesterday and I might have to call some, some help, some helicopters or something in because I got some rough dogs, but man, there's there's fifteen boar hogs together. That's crazy. Dude, it is insane. You know, I was telling you something about it. Yeah, you was telling me a little bit about it. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to send you the picture. And when you see these hogs, you zoom in, their damn bellies are about to drag the ground. They are the biggest hogs that I've seen in a pack like that, in a group. It's, I don't know what we're going to do with them. I might have to break out the old pig rig. There you go. I'd be scared (laughs) to turn them cur dogs mine loose. They might cur out. I don't know. (laughs) I put the jags on him. I put the jags hey, on him. Yeah, Brad got some of them. Them patternails, them jags, shit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but uh, no, you know, talking about the 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 way you were just talking about the dogs, you might get a wild hair and cast them. You might rig hunt them, or whatever it calls for. Are those dogs like that? Because I've got just a couple that'll do that'll hunt any way you want to hunt. But the majority of them, they they tend to lean more toward one way. So how how hard is it to get the dogs to to cast versus rig hunt versus walk hunt or road hunt, whatever? Uh, I mean, I think I think a dog will always lean. You know, I mean, he'll be he'll be better at one side of it than you know he will. Yes, you know both sides. But I mean, I've had a lot. I've had several dogs just. 
you know, they was good. It didn't matter which way you wanted to punt them, you know, but uh, you'll find that one every once in a blue moon that'll be. Yeah, just you know, go out. Yeah, I mean. Do it all. Yeah. Now, yeah. do you, uh, you like silent dogs or open dogs? Does it, or does I do. it matter? I do, I do run a silent dog. I, I don't want him barking till, till, till he's, he's yeah. Uh, I had a jip a long time ago, and I, and she's probably one of the top two jips that I owned in my life, and and she she had chirp behind dog, yeah. but uh, but she was hard headed enough, you know. She it didn't matter if it run from here to your house, she'd be there at the end of it. I, and and that, you know, there's a lot of people that I think they misconstrue, especially guys that first start hog hunting or haven't been around it a whole lot. I think they misconstrue the conception of what we're talking about: silent versus open dogs. You can catch right. you can catch a hog with any of it. Oh yeah, with, with any of it. If you got a dog that's wide open, screaming on track, but he's running 16, 18 miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, okay, you're gonna catch the hog. If oh yeah. You, no. If you got an old hound that just bumps every now and then, but he stays steady, he can push him long enough, you mm-hmm. know, or he might not press him enough to even run. Hog might take a bait. Silent dogs, they might not ever, you know, we the way ours work a lot of times, we'll we'll be on top of them while they're in the bed. And we put GoPros on them. And uh we used to run a lot of GoPros years ago before before there was ever a GoPro two or three. This is back a long time ago. And then right. for a, a period of years, we quit. And then my buddy Rodney Bell, he had some to put on his dogs. And so now we done got back into that. Rodney's got a really good design on his his collar and the way he's got it. And we're trying to trying to pass that design along to where we can uh, produce it and, 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 and market it, you know, because the, right. the way it is right now, it works phenomenal. But it's, you know, it's it's made homemade stuff that you put together. It, oh, yeah. it'd be hard to market it, but yeah. having those GoPros on our dogs, we'll see them go wake, basically wake the hog up. And sometimes that's a good thing, but mm-hmm. you also got to stop and think if you ain't run that hog none, he's fresh. So I can and, imagine that stuff on the dogs hunting there, ain't it? Oh yeah, it is. But I, I like hunting that drive. I've always liked hunting and starting dogs on that drive. Hot. Yeah. Better, you know. Well, I don't know. Why, why don't know. do you like it better like that? Man, it just seems like you know if you take them dogs when they're young, you know, and you start them in that dry, hot, and you know, scent don't stay on the ground very long. That there you go. Dry, hot stuff, and man, when when winter time hits and they got a little moisture in there, they go crazy they can, then. They burn them down. I mean, make a make a you know make a year old dog look like he's Sometimes. Yep. That's kind of, we have, we got a lot of humidity. So we, we always got a good bit of moisture. And, right. and in the mornings that, you know, of course that's our best time, but you know, and I'm the same way, like you're talking about, I try to make it, I make it as tough on the pups as I can, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I want to set them up for success, but I want to make them hunt. Yeah. So what, you know, we'll do late evening hunts while the sun's just is still up and it's it's real dry. A lot of times right. a lot of times we'll take the pups out when it's like that. And uh like you said, if they can get to where they're finding pigs in that scenario, well, when they have a uh, have enough moisture on the ground they really get busy. Oh yeah. Yeah, they burn track, you know, come on. Well with you doing all these different methods, uh, you know, running dogs, the thermal, the trapping there's the age old question, which one is most effective now? Not, not just to hunt, but if we're, you know, as far as taking care of a property, say you have a landowner that calls you and says, look, I got to get rid of these hogs, you know, or is it a combination of all of it? Man, you know, uh, as far as eradication goes, uh, a cell phone trigger trap is, is, I mean, it, it's the way to go if you're wanting to, you know, totally eradicate a set of pigs. Yeah. Uh, you know, you hear all kinds of stories and, you know, and, 
and methods and, and everything. But uh, I mean, as far as you know, big boars, you know, your your dog in the park's gonna be your, you know, that's that's gonna be your way to go. Uh, but number wise, I mean, them them sail traps are are deadly. I mean, and I, you know, I got a lot of thermal hunts, a, a ton every year. We can take, you know, on an average, we'll have four four shooters, and you know, we shoot into a group of fifty, sixty pigs. Average on average, they're gonna kill four to eight. Yeah. Uh, every, I mean, every time. Uh, if I take a cell phone trap and I bait it in, and there's fifty in a group, I can sit there and watch a live feed camera. Till number fifty goes in the gate and close the door, and there's fifty gone. That's it. Know? Yeah, uh, and and you're not educating them either. No, and that that's a big deal there. I mean, you know, I know some guys run some board busters and and stuff, and and if they miss one hog, I mean, it, it's it's over. Yeah. And I've tried uh, to tell a lot of people that around here, if you drop that trap and all of them are not in it then you i don't yeah. know to me it's like you're not doing any good then just because if you got 10 of them and there's 20 left you didn't do shit no you didn't you didn't do anything. no you all you did was create work for yourself right you know in here we had you know they they used to shoot them a bunch with a chopper and and stuff and mm -hmm. man I, i'd catch all behind a chopper i had all. several people tell me the same thing and and uh, and it used to be funny to watch it because I mean there's there were some spots they flew that that I could dog hunt you know around it and and they'd fly a chopper in there all day and and then pigs would go to one little thicket and they could I mean they'd they just, just huddle up just huddle up yeah that's what and, I was thinking the same thing like and they could blow a siren over the top of them all day long and they, you know, move. they wouldn't move a lick you know. Yeah. And you watch a five pound show, you know, or baby pig, you know, I mean, you watch a five pound pig run to a fire ticket and hold down. And I mean, they blow a siren over him for 10 minutes. I mean, and he does that from his the time he's little. Yeah. When he's bigger, he's not, he shit. Yeah. When, they, when they show up and they hear the chopper fire up, they're liable to go over there and just sit down by a, a stump and just lay there. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. They're, they're, they're intelligent animals. That's a lot. Oh, of, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Well, that's like that group of all them big boars I'm talking about. How? Look, we're up there and hunt that place all the time. How, mm -hmm. how do how do how does that many big boar hogs live that long? And it's because wow. they're in that group. Is what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Like they don't I, split up. I've caught this group on camera a few times, and it's been over the period of the last four or five years. And it blows my mind every time I see them, but they're extremely smart. I, I don't think they get enough credit for how smart they are. No. You know? uh, I mean, I've watched them. Uh, I got a, a good dog of mine killed a couple months ago. Uh, and that that spot where he was at, uh, and that hog had lived his whole life in a spot that we thermal hunt, you know, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes two, three, four times a week and, and don't see hog like, you know, that I got on that day. I mean, he was, you know, he, he lived right in the middle of all that stuff. That's crazy. In a quarter, I mean, he lived in a quarter, you know, a quarter mile square and he lived his whole life there. And there, I mean, as far as I know, he didn't come out till I bumped him, you know, and, just happened on to him and i mean and uh, it's it's amazing sometimes just you know how smart they are and yeah. i mean and it, it don't take them long to pick up on pick up on stuff either no it, it doesn't uh there's a like i said there's a lot of guys <clears throat> excuse me they uh they you know they start out deer hunting and and, and then they get you know, say they start out and they're they're running dogs, and then they get into steel hunting, and then they they get into bow hunting, and they want to kill yeah. this one big buck, and and yeah. they they try to compare it, or try to say like this this one big deer is smarter 
than this big boar hog. And nothing. I, I would have part. to disagree. I promise. You. Look, them big boar hogs that we catch. Say, say yeah. you catch like that one you caught. I've called mm-hmm. them. Uh, all the guys that I named off, all the guys I know, everybody's caught that one. Oh yeah. And, and guys like us have been lucky to catch several. It's not because we had him pegged out and patterned. It's because we got lucky, or or we did see a track. It's not because we watched him for five or six years grow up and fed him, had him on camera every damn day, uh, push right. protein to him and all that shit. To me, that's why right. I'm like, how how can it be that damn? How can you try to compare that? Like, yeah, we, yeah, I mean, we catch them by by accident. Yeah, I mean that that's basically it, and mm-hmm. and I mean I do I I used to do a lot of deer hunting too, and I mean, you know, a six seven year old deer mm-hmm. in the prime of his life and i mean i've got a wall full of them but i mean that they're not as smart as you know 250 pound bull rock been hunted every day of his life either yep i mean they, they'll make they'll make deer look look plumb dumb sometimes without you know? a doubt and, and that, that that old buck you know once that uh that doe kicks in it changes because i've seen some monsters i mean Oh yeah, I, I've seen them where they're just walking down the the road in front of a damn truck like they're crazy. You know, they're yeah. they're all they're horned up and ready to breed. Oh yeah, we call it we call it rut drunk. Yeah, exactly. First time I ever seen that after I got older, I was I literally was driving behind this this deer on a gravel road, and literally got up close enough that I touched him with the truck before he took off, and he didn't go far. Mm-hmm. You, you you ain't gonna do no boar hog like that. Mm-mm. Yeah, not any I've ever ever been around. Not no big ones. No, you know a bunch of guys around here that give me a hard time, I, and I tell them, I mean, I, I'd rather catch a three hundred pound boar with five inch teeth versus kill a two hundred inch deer. Oh, you know? without a doubt. I mean, that that's just me, you know. But we we had a customer come in earlier. My wife told me uh, I went and got some peanuts. Well. He was like, he said, well, I, he told my wife, he said, I, I'd like to try to get some of them. He said, he must be going to use them for deer. He said, I know he's not going to feed them them damn pigs. <laughs> Kelly said, you don't know him too good. I was <laughs> like, I wouldn't waste them on deer. Hey, we used to feed pigs here. We, we did. Yeah. They make your teeth grow. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, I'm going to ship. I'm fixing to put it out on a pile. I, yeah. I, got, a bait, I got a bait pile, and hogs are all around it. and and. I don't I don't know what it is. Like I said, every now and then I'll get a good boar hog on camera. You can go up there and if I got one coming in every day for a week, <clears throat> then we go up there and hunt. We're gonna catch a shoat. Something about a hundred pounds. Right. We ain't gonna catch it. But now seeing I don't I don't jump and run when the camera goes off either. Right, yeah. You know, so if I done that, yeah, I might could catch him. I don't know. But yeah. I don't know. I I just don't like hunting like that. Oh yeah. I mean the the new cell cams they're they're game changer. I love them. Deadly man. But uh, yeah. When, now if it comes down to business, like you said, eradication, getting rid of them. Yeah. Yes. I, it's the greatest tool. You know, besides your trap. Uh, but, but for Idiot. just for enjoyment, I like seeing what I what's coming in on camera, but. At the same time, I, I don't use that to go catch hogs. I don't. Th- right. I don't think you can. I don't think you can run when the camera goes off. Take your dogs, drop it on a really hot track, catch this big old boar hog, post pictures all over the internet, Facebook or whatever social media, and, right. and say you got great dogs. No, I and, I and and I and I, I don't want to offend anybody like that, but it's, you know. If I know he was there Tuesday and I go hunt Saturday and he hasn't been on camera or anything and I still catch him, okay, I feel a little better about that. Right. So I don't know. It it's just everybody's different. Oh yeah. Some and some, some people hold a higher regard, I guess. And you, I mean you'd be surprised how much that happens now. I know a couple of guys <laughs> they I do uh, too. Yeah. Hey, I, I promise you. They'll, they'll be like, got a good one on camera right here. And then an hour later, they'll be posting that shit. Oh, yeah. And, and talking shit, you know. And 
hey, I'm not, I don't bust them out, and I don't, I don't, I don't knock them down either. That's the no, way they want to do it. That's their business, and oh, that, yeah. that's awesome. Hey, that, if you're happy, I'm tickled. Oh yeah, you know, no so, doubt. But, no uh, doubt. So we're gonna have another band. You see it? You bet. Yeah, the December 9th and tenth. Uh, be a Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Uh, now we did a little different on this last band. We did. did. We had we had the Woods class, and uh, yeah, that's that's. I think you know I was talking to Ed after it was over, and, and he said, "Man, I I really think that's going to be something." And I said, "I I hope it is." You know, uh, I believe it will. I do too. Uh, this one. We're gonna do this one a little different too. We're gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna have one dog and I'm gonna have two dogs. That's gonna really change it up. And the woods deal. I'm gonna do it on Sunday. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the pro stuff on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday we'll do the one dog, two dogs woods. And uh, and I do it a little different, you know, like me and you talked before this last one and you know, and you know, a bunch of people have a woods option or or something, but yeah. I'll, I'll Wanted a, I wanted a class, you know, where, you know, a guy could come and put a woods dog in it and not have to worry about competing against a dog, you know. Yeah. That's and a lot of people don't understand that that difference in the option in the class because right. re regular woods guys who've never been to a bay, they don't <laughs> really correlate that. They just see their dog in there against goose or or somebody like, you know, uh, yeah, Matador, Johnny White right. and them's dogs, uh, mm -hmm. Miss Ray and them's dogs. They, you know, you got right. all these pro dogs, and then you bought your option, so you got about five or six Woods dogs in there, and they don't look as good compared to these other dogs. But when you put 30 Woods dogs together running with each other all in one class and make it a, an event, dude, you know, it, it worked out good. Oh yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Had fun. I mean, that I that I talked to, everybody had a good time. And, you know, and, everybody. And we're gonna judge it a little differently, like like we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, we're still kind of working that deal out, you yeah. know, on how to do it. But uh, it's gonna be judged a little bit different. And I and I think you know, I mean, we got a good platform, you know, to go off of with the yeah. pro dog. I mean, we got to do something, you know, as far as. You know, I, I mean, I don't, I ain't going to say, you know, we can hold them to the same standard as we can, a, you know, a pro dog. I, and I agree to that because I have pro dogs as well. And yeah. my, my pro dogs should perform a certain way. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and and I don't have any issues if you dock them like that. That's fine. That's what they're born, right. raised, bred for. That's what they're supposed to do. But then oh, I have yeah. my woods dog over here. You know, it's a totally different animal. Some of oh, yeah. some of them can do both, no problem. Mm -hmm. But very few can do it consistently and do it to the same standard as a pro dog. Oh yeah, and there's gonna be some, you know, they'll you know, like at my bay and there was you know, there was a couple of them there. Yeah. You know, a twelve dog of Carters and a that Bubba, black fan dog above us, Bubba, you know. Look, that dog right there was phenomenal. And he's tough. He and, is and tough. Only and I hope I hope Bubba listens to this. Like I said, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it. The only issue that there was with that dog was when Bubba was getting all hyped up. You know, he was fired up. You know, everybody had been drinking some cold beer, and he was hooping and hollering, and his dog kept looking at him. And that, you know, right. and that that wasn't the dog's fault. As no. far, as far as just straight baying, that dog right there be one of the hardest dogs to beat that I seen. Oh yeah. So I, yeah, you know, he, I, I like to throw it out there. And oh, oh, twelve. Now he's he he was he was on. Now he was doing his thing. You know, I had more. I had you know, I had people coming up to me that I mean, don't even know nothing about a dog. Mm -hmm. you no know, hog dog that was here, just you know, just watching and and stuff, and asked me about twelve and that and that black and tan dog in the woods class. Yep. And they, they done good. They did. They did. They did really, really good. And I'd hate for them to put them two together and bay. Two would be tough, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, I ain't no doubt. It'd be it. It'd be hard to beat them. Honestly, if they ran them in the pen a little while, it'd be hard to beat them in in the pro stuff. I think you know they would be up to that I, level. And we talked about that. You know, 
we mm. talked about having that diamond in the rough, you know, show up. Yes. And, I think, and that's, I what, think that's what happened. You know, I mean, that's what it's about. It, you know, people, new people coming in and, mm. you know, and, and seeing that, you know, seeing that shine in a the dog, they didn't know, you know, they didn't even know they had till they got here. Yes. You know? mm. and, there was a couple of dogs like that, that were, that, that, that done extremely well in the woods event but now there was a bunch of them that mm -hmm. they didn't do as well as they the owners thought they would do oh yeah and, yes. and that goes to the hogs that's the that's the stock because uh that some of it was pretty rough stock i like yeah. it, you know i had, I had some that they sure enough they 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 sure <laughs> they them at the gate yeah they would there and, was that, a and couple that, that got knocked through the gate yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just ram. Uh, well, I like it, man. I, I I root for the hog sometimes too, you know. Oh yeah. And that one spotted and, boar hog, that that black and white one. Yeah, he's real. He, he'd stand out in the middle of the pen, and it, in the in that woods event, it was a it was tough enough. You could leave him in two or three times in a row, and just say, okay, who's going to actually bait? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, he, that, that was that was phenomenal. And he's a good dog too. Yeah. I caught him. I caught him five miles from the house over here. Really? Yeah, he's he's a good dog. He's a good one. He he really is. There, and there were several of them in there I seen that were top notch. No doubt. I appreciate. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to up them just a little bit come come December. I'm, I'm, yeah, you need you you need you a good about ten or twelve for that two dog. That the 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 two dog woods event or the woods class, yeah, you need you about a dozen of them. It's just just tough. Maybe not a dozen. You might not need that many. I hope you do. I hope we have to swap hogs out a bunch. Have so many damn runs. I, the, the hogs will be here. That's one thing about it. They'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, if it's anything, the first of it, the first time I went out there, the hogs were extremely good. This time they were all of them were extremely good. So you just keep doing what you're doing. And can't I'm nobody try. complain about the pigs. That's for damn sure. No, I mean that was that was my biggest deal, you know. If and I said it when I done it, and and I'll stand by it. If and and I said if I if I was gonna bait good old, you know, or I wasn't gonna have one. And yeah, and that's the way it's always gonna be. I mean, I'll, I'll always have a good set of hogs, and or I'll make sure it makes a, good a difference. Set. It does. It it does, and and they're I like them a little, just a little more fiery than some people. But yeah, I mean, well, I mean, just, at, at that rate, it's part, you know, it's that there shouldn't be any reason they can't bay an everyday average hog. But some of those dogs, like when you draw, like we're talking about the dogs being even across the board, or or more even across the board now. What about the hogs? So at your right. at your bay, almost every hog was there was one or two that really stood out. Mm -hmm. and I think there was one during the first rant, the first time, the first day we bayed, he uh he got a little slower in the ass end. Uh yeah. But other than that, they were pretty even. So if yeah. you go to the to another bay and you get say you got a dog like mine or a couple of dogs like mine that, that can bay a rough hog. They can bay one that's set up. They can bay, they can bay a set up hog even better. But mm -hmm. say I draw the roughest hog there and we, we run a nine, eight. Well, then the next guy draws a hog that comes out and just sets up pretty as you please. And he bays a 10, which is the better bay. Cause and I'm not saying that anybody's doing anything wrong by no means. I was yeah. we've talked about this before. I was like, we compare this to rodeo a lot. If we could we if we could score the hog and the dog to as a combined score, I think it would be so much better. Oh yeah. But it'd be I hard agree. it'd be hard to do that. It would and, be. And I understand. You you would have to have we would have to be there'd have to be a lot of restrictions lifted first. You there know, would to where you could have Everybody could have enough hogs to put a set together like that. 
Oh yeah, because yeah, it, it would be super tough to have hogs that uh, were all PBR status, you know. Right. And that to me, that's what I yeah. like. I don't, I don't want to see a setup hog. <laughs> you know, I want to see it some bait. Oh yeah. But and that's you know that's what it's coming to. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to come down to where it's you know we're going to have to have that next level hogs just like you know I mean now you know the the competition in the pro side is unreal. Yeah, you know that's what I'm saying. I mean, There's a lot of dogs that are re- I mean very very good. Oh yeah, they, they are. <laughs> when I yeah. first started going, there was just a handful of dogs that were top tier dogs. Yeah, now you know out of you know, I mean you take, you know, a bay and down there at Gates and you'll have shoot, man. You know, hundred and thirty in the pro crash and then you've got seventy five in the first bay off. You know, yes. that ought to, I think ought we to did take. have I think we had like a hundred and forty something and then we had like seventy in the bay off. And it wasn't because of it, you know, like I said, the there's so many good dogs. Oh yeah, the, like the they're, they're all excited. getting yes. The competition is and I'm it's getting steeper and steeper every day. Every time I go to a bay, this past bay, what Ronnie Creek brought out, boys, I'm telling you. Yeah. I, if that if that's his puppies, if y'all didn't get to see it and y'all wasn't there, I hey y'all missed it. I'm telling you. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, they- if they hold true to what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, and Tyler, he's got that bay coming up. They ought to do good there, and then they should. They'll, yeah, they'll be able to do puppy all the way through through the October bay. Oh, sure. yeah. I think they're eight months old, so it, it's crazy. Them look, some of the bastards was good, and that was only yeah. half of them. He only brought half of them, I think. Yeah, and they, and I mean. I like hear they didn't draw no easy pig either. No, I mean, no, no. I mean, they had they had a pretty rough little hog. Or... Well, you know, he ran them in the pro class too, in the open class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they did. I mean, they did good. Oh yeah, they did. Now they got oh, a yeah. that one that one group of puppies, well, that one pair. They got a they got a rank hog, and they mm-hmm. they, they baited him. I think it was a nine nine eight or nine nine, but they had to work the entire time. Yeah. So, you know, I, I seen that, like I said, and with the heat, it was a hundred plus degrees. They they didn't act like it even bothered them. No. So, you know, we run the whole run that whole bay and it was right at almost two hundred entries, I think. Yeah. I had three catch outs on two hundred. Yeah. There there was like I said, I knew there wasn't many. Uh we had we had won the last eight seconds with OJ. Yeah. And then I think Monica had one. Yep. Who else had? It wasn't man, there wasn't many. No. I, I knew there wasn't more than five. Three, 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 no, it was three or four. There might have been four. Yeah, I think so. I knew there would there couldn't have been more than than four or five at all. Uh my goals to run them with zero, but Yeah. Happen, you know, um, but I was trying to think, that gummit, how many it was because me and you were talking about it. And uh, now there was a few that got caught after time, and they were, you know, of course, when the hog was running trying to return back with oh, yeah, with you know, people trying to separate the dog and the, and the hog and all that. There was something oh, yeah. grabbed a hope, but they weren't like a they weren't a catch out. No, now, <laughs> while they were baying, there was only, I mean. As far as counts, I think there was only a handful of times that the count was ever started. Period. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't very many. No, no, not at all. So you you keep them hogs like that, they, it'll it 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 keeps the level of dogs up too. It really tells on what the dogs are. Oh yeah, and like I said, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get a little just a notch above what them was for for December. So. Hopefully, hopefully that works. Uh, you know, them hogs held up pretty good considering. I mean, I run that. Oh, yeah. I run that on twenty. Yeah, I was going to say it. What there weren't there wasn't a huge amount, and they all held up really good. They did. They started, you know, right there towards the last of the two dog. There was a couple of them started falling off. But, yeah. But 
I think in December, you know, they'll be feeling a little more frisky and froggy. And oh yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we won't have to deal with a hundred degrees. <laughs> yeah, ain't no doubt that. Uh, and that'll change. That changes everything. The dogs will be a little, a little spunky. The hogs will be a little more spunky. We'll all feel yeah. a little more spunky. Hopefully. <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully. Well, hopefully. Uh, sure. you know, I, I'm really looking forward to it. To man, I, it's a it's a long drive for us, but at oh, yeah. the same time, it's worth it. And there was a few people that came. I mean, Carter, he came over and he drove from Georgia to, to Alabama and rode with us. Uh, Brother Don Coggins, he drove like probably 16, 17 hours. Had to be. He told me 18. Okay. I think he said. Yeah, he had to be that far. Don's been here both shows. He come to yep. come last first or so of y'all, you know. And, and I, I mean, that's why I do it, you know. Yep. Is, you know, give somebody a spot to go and, and you know, and come and, you know, and run a woods dog if they need to or if they want to, you know. And every time here that I've had it, and me and you talked about this too, there's a ton of new people. Yep. That, you know, yep. there's a ton of people show up, you know, that, I mean, that's just, I mean. And most of them are, 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 are just woods guys. They, they hunt. Yep. Yeah, just woods guys. And they're within uh probably four or five hours of driving around you. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and you got local guys that are showing up or, or people that are more local. Uh yeah. They they come out and they support it. I had a there was a couple of groups of younger folks that come out just to to hang out and they were gonna mm -hmm. you know, they were gonna run they ran their woods dogs on Friday. And that's all oh, they, yeah. that was their only intention. Then they said, hey, we're coming back tomorrow. And oh, they, yeah. They came back Saturday. Oh, stayed they run the, yeah, run the whole show, man. Yeah. yeah they so did. it turned out from, from one dog, one or two dogs being entered in a, a $30 class to, I think they brought like six or eight more the next day and yeah. uh, and run them in the, in the one dog and the two dog and, and just, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was a good show. And, and, and doing things like that, it should grow every time. I hope so. I mean, I, I have, we have a lot of fun, you know, doing it and, and, and it's something I've always wanted to do. You know, I, I don't go, I don't make the, you know, a lot of the big bands anymore. It's just, I'm so busy, you know, with guiding and, yeah. and stuff. Well, and I don't know you got a lot of stuff going on, but I did, I did, I put a deposit on a puppy yesterday. So that, that's fixing to change. I'm going to make you. I want to make a few if Good it turns deal. out. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But right on. She she turns out all right. I'll I'll make a trip or two. Make a trip or two. Hell yeah. Yep. Yeah, just well, visit. Hey, yeah, we love to have you. Like I said, we try to make all that we can. There in the past couple of years, you know, I I made a declaration. I said I, I'm going to go to every one that I can go to, and we're going to see how all the people, all the hogs, all the dogs. We're gonna see how everything's done at each area, and and see if there's a big difference. Cause you always hear, you know, well in Texas they do this, or Louisiana they do this, or in Oklahoma or in Georgia, blah blah blah. Let me tell you something. It's all the same. We all hog hunter. Man. Everybody loves hogs and dogs. At yep. every bay, there's somebody bitching. At every bay, there's oh, yeah. a bunch of people having fun. There's oh, yeah. there's quite a few that's done drank a little too much. There's oh, going to be yeah. one or two get mad and go home. And, oh, and then yeah. they're going to come back every time. That's and, right. And we have Good hogs dog, and dogs. Man. Yes. Have a – dude, it's been the same, like I said, whether I've been in Georgia, uh, Louisiana, Texas, or Oklahoma. Now, the, it is a diff, – there's different levels, you know. Oh, yeah, there, there is. There, there's different levels of, of competition. Mm -hmm. Like at one place, it's more – it's more about competition, but they're all still a group. And then oh, yeah. had the next place where it's just like, hell, look, guys, we're just hanging out drinking beer, you know. So, right. But, uh, man, it's it, it's a good deal. We just need to keep it alive and keep it going. And what you're doing is 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 really helping. Uh, I you know I appreciate you you know doing this this phone call with us. Oh yeah, you taking, did. taking time out of your day to do that. 
I'm kind of excited about the Woods deal. I, I really think that's going to turn into something. You know, it, it is. I, I bet I had probably, man, I probably had 200 calls on that on that last bay, and then I bet 75% of them was that Woods class. Really? Yep. Hell yeah. Yep. Is that thing like again? How much we got? People. Now? Okay. <laughs> Well, that's you know that, that's what it's going to take is people being there because we can't bay if we ain't got no people. No, that's right. That is real. But I think the two dog deal. I think it'll be fun. I think it you will know? too. There's going to be more people that their dogs work better with two dogs, and they're you know they're going to take yeah. a chance on it. Oh yeah, I, I for hope sure. they do. You know, cause we're we're going to be there, and uh, we're going to uh, we're going to try to have some stuff organized and set up and I'll get with you on this <clears throat> on some of that to where we got I don't know we might put together like a maybe some karaoke or something for Friday night or something when everybody gets there right everybody I, gets everybody yeah. gets pictures in them yeah we we might yeah. do something like that you know it really when when Jake got Jay Bird to start coming to the shows and stuff man it really changed the 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 whole atmosphere it does it changed Game yeah, but you can't have too much because then people get to they get to having too much fun and forget what they're doing over here. So uh, you got to find yeah. that that medium, that medium in there. Yeah, yeah it, man, it it did. You know when you know everybody had a theme song and you know different people's got a yes. theme. Song, you, know, you know, like Goose or Code Red or that's right or one of them. It's you know it gives. I mean, it's it's a whole different. You know, jive on the and I and and I think you know I'm a big believer. You know what what what's in that arm goes down that lead. You know? Yeah, it. I I agree with you 100. percent Yeah, I mean, if you walk up there thinking you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof, that that's, dog's going. That's it. Tall. That's that energy. He's working off that energy. Oh yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. Oh, uh, but yeah, my. Yeah. My my baby sister, she bought a, a big old setup. And I mean it's not like a, a little karaoke deal. I mean, there's it's got giant PAs. I mean, it's a huge, huge setup. And I think there's three hundred and something thousand songs she's got on downloaded already. And you could use it the same way that like, like kind of like what Jaybird's doing. You know, you could sit up there and just play a song. Nobody has to sing it. Right, yeah. And yeah, that would probably just, be for the best. Yeah, it'd be good. <laughs> so, yeah. Until yeah. everybody gets a few beers in them, then it'd be all right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay, right. you can bathe, but you got to sing your own theme song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is right. All right, brother. Well, we're going to keep it going. We're going to we're gonna put the word out. We're going to advertise. As soon as you get the flyer and stuff made up or whatever else you need to do, uh, we, yeah. we're going to keep putting it out there. Hunter took some really good pictures. She's supposed to send me some. I'll, yeah. I'll get I'll get the flyer made up and and send it to you. This one here is going to be a buckle bay, and I'm going to give away All buckles. Right. Uh, well, that right there will get a few people's interest already. Yeah, yeah, just that, that'll just be having them buckles. Yep, yep. It'll be it'll be a buckle bay in first 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 place in every class will get a buckle. And, Hell yeah! You know, two dogs will have two buckles. You know, the two dogs woods will have two buckles. Uh, it, it ought to be a good one. I, I'm hoping it is. It should be. Good, good, good. Hopefully. All right, buddy. Well, is there anything else you want to add to it? Nope. I don't guess. All right. We nope. uh, think we've, Thank been got, we've been got about an hour on here, so that'd be a pretty good little segment there. We uh, we, yeah. we do appreciate you and all the work that you do to get this stuff ready, oh, you know, it, that's just like with Jake or Mr. Mark or any of those guys, when, when they're putting something like this together, people don't see how much work you have to do just leading up to it. And then how much you have to do after it's over. Oh yeah. So, and I, I mean, I bet y'all, I mean, driving, you know, that's, that means a lot to us, you know, people driving, you know, as far as y'all do to come and support us. So. Well, we, that's, you know, that's that's one of them deals is kind of, you know, take care of who takes care of you. If we all don't work together, we're going nowhere. Oh, yeah. That's right. So, uh, but uh, yeah. till, uh, 
if you if anything new pops up or something, man, holler at me. Let me know. And if uh, if we need to do another episode, just let me know, man. We'll do it again. Sounds good, buddy. All right, Rusty. We appreciate you. All right. All right. Thank y'all. All right. Thank you, buddy. See you, you bet. Bye-bye.